by now maybe you're already thinking okay all this sounds good but is it doable that's the title of today's lesson on the series of today Deuteronomy 30 we're still in that book 19 chapters down from where we were last time and God's still talking about today so it must be important he starts with saying when you and your children return to the Lord and obey him with all your heart according to what I command you today the Lord will restore your fortunes and have compassion on you and gather you from all the nations. You will again obey the Lord and all his commands I'm giving you today. I'm blown away by how many times the word today appears in this book. The importance of leaning in, hearing his words, his commands today. And it's always the same to love him with your heart and soul. In verse 11, he says that what he's asking them to do today is not beyond their reach or too difficult. It's doable. How have you been doing since last time? Have you thought about loving him with all your heart every day? Have you been telling the next generation about his faithfulness in your life? Seems like a hard task upon the first look. Seems a bit contrived, intentional, and something laborious and something not natural. But here's the verses. Now what I'm commanding you today is not too difficult or beyond your reach. It's not up in heaven so that you have to ask who will ascend to heaven and get it and proclaim it so we can obey it. It's not beyond the sea so that you have to say, who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it? No, it's very near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart so you can obey it. And there are lots more mentions of today. So why do you think God emphasizes his directives with the word today so often? I love it because it reminds us that he's with us daily. We don't have to carry the past or worries of the future, but just look up daily and listen. This seems doable not a hard task and a much lighter burden to bear. Listen today, he's not asking us to ascend mountains or cross seas to hear and obey. His words with us in our mouths and hearts. And he tells them to choose life or death, but to choose life so their children can live. I think it's interesting how we're given a new day with the sunrise every morning, a fresh start with morning light and dew, and his mercies are new every morning. Yet by night, we're often heavy and weary again as the sun sets and our head hits the pillow. I recently thought about this proverbial backpack that we pick up every day and in it we place stones all day. Worry for our kids about tomorrow, their jobs, their future, their spouses, their children, their health, and that load becomes heavy. We're also torn away by loving other things, entertaining untrue thoughts about God's love until questions are also stones that we pile up on top of worries and by night nighttime, this backpack is unbearably heavy and we can barely walk. Then perhaps we recall a song or a verse about laying back against our father's chest and breathing. So we try it. We lay back against him, but our minds and our chest feels heavy. And then I saw this picture. All we've done is turn our backpack around and lay it on our chest as we lay back against his chest. Well, we didn't unload the stones or empty the backpack. We just kept it and laid it on our chest and no wonder we feel heavy. Today's over, but the load is heavy that we carry. And imagine this pack if we never empty it or lay it down day after day. God's directives, one, once again, is to listen every morning to his commands and love him and choose life so that our children may live strong directives, the ones that are repeated and the ones that we are told are not beyond our reach or too difficult. But if we gather stones and never lay them down and we lay against him, we're still feeling heavy. Psalm 95 summarizes this way of living, that it's not easy, it's doable today. It's a call to sing for joy and shout to our rock to come to him with thankful hearts and sing praise. Why? Because he's a great God and King and everything on earth belongs to him. Then the writer recalls how the sea belongs to him and the dry land, perhaps recalling the sea that was crossed and how they exited on dry land. And he calls others to worship and kneel. Why? Because God is good and we are his people, the flock under his care. Today, hear his voice and don't harden your heart. Living today in his directives calls for a response of singing and shouting and thankfulness as the day begins. It includes remembering his provision and his deeds from yesterday. That's how yesterday plays in today. Not woes, failures, and shortcomings, but recognition of God's hand in leading us through hard times to dry land. And then there's the call to come to those around us and call them in this relationship with the God that we call our rock, because everything is his. 
Now that just seems natural. Just wake up today and give thanks and turn your heart toward him with an empty backpack that you've dumped out the night before. And instead of gathering heavy stones, we would call the goodness of God and call those around to worship with us. It's as simple as being among a flock of sheep and listening today to the shepherd's voice and obeying and calling others to follow. So today, examine your own backpack and see what's in it by nightfall. Empty out the heavy stones, leg it back against him and breathe so that each day is not full of trouble or woe, but rather full of thanksgiving and praise. It's doable today.